Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be giving you some romance recommendations that have disability or illness representation in them. So if you did not know, July is actually Disability Pride Month and I actually didn't know that this was a thing. I didn't know that disability had a pride month um, until this year and I'm someone who has a disability and I'm kind of shocked that I didn't even know about this so if you do not know I am a huge advocate for disability representation in literature and books I mainly talk about romance books though and the representation in romance books because that is the majority of what I read I do dive into the young adult genre dive back into the young adult genre uh, mainly for books that have disability representation in them. But today we are only going to be talking about romance books So I have ten more recommendations for you. If you did not know I actually have two other Romance books with disability rep videos I will link them down below for your viewing pleasure in every book and I'm going to talk about a character one of the main characters either has a chronic illness an illness in general or um, they have a disability. Um, again, you can go watch my part one video to this about the discussion of the word disability. Um, I also will link down below uh, my disability story and the need for um, more representation when it comes to disability in books, literature, in the media in general because I feel like it is lacking. So I'm very glad that I can make part three for y'all. So let's dive on into these recommendations. First, we have my favorite book so far of 2021, which is Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. I adore Talia Hibbert. So many books on these disability recommendation videos are from Talia Hibbert. Her books are so diverse. It is amazing. I love this woman. This is the third book, a part of the Brown Sisters series. You don't need to read them in order, like at all. You don't need to. I feel like you get the more, more out of it if you do. So this is technically book number three, but you don't need to read them in order, I don't feel like. Um, but this is definitely my favorite in the series. Or, mm, no, I feel like it's contending with book one. I fall in the minority of people here when book two, Danny Brown, is my least favorite out of the bunch. I feel like it's just because I didn't connect to Danny as much as I did with Chloe and Eve in here, um, but nevertheless, I love all of the books, okay? <laughs> so this book is about Eve and she's kind of like a trust fund baby. Her family is quite rich and she hasn't been keeping a job at all and so her parents kind of have an intervention with her and is like, if you can keep a job for a year, you can have your um, money back. Like we're cutting you off until you can have a steady job for a year. And so Eve kind of drives around trying to look for a job. She comes across this bed and breakfast who's trying to hire a chef. But at the time, she doesn't have a resume or anything, and it is pouring down rain. And so she just goes in for the heck of it to go see what this job entails. And so she walks in, and there she meets Jacob, who is the love interest of this story. And he is the owner of the bed and breakfast. Right when Jacob sees Eve, he does not like her. <laughs> um, she is very disheveled. She has weird sayings on her shirt. Uh, she didn't come in with a resume. She was not prepared at all for this interview, and he is very put off by her. But after the interview, they both like leave the building and uh, she accidentally may or may not uh, hit Jacob with his car and then taking care of him at the bed and breakfast and ends up inserting herself into his life and his bed and breakfast. And it is so sweet. It is cute. It is hot. It is hot, y'all. Jacob in here has autism and I really love the discussion of autism in this book. I feel like it was done amazingly and Eve is kind of coming to grips with and kind of learning about her own diagnosis and whether or not she may or may not also have autism um and so I just I love the discussion of autism in here and just like the talk of stemming I loved it I loved it I then want to talk about a recent read of mine which is Man in Charge by Lauren Lynn Page this is actually a duet so you have Man in Charge and then the second book Man in Love you have to read them together book one ends on a cliffhanger y'all so this is a contemporary romance book where our heroine she works for this like charity consultant company where she kind of links big businesses with charities in need so the big businesses can support these charities. So our heroine ends up having this one night stand with this guy that she meets at a party and little does she know that he is one of the big major people that work in this company and they basically have to like hide their relationship together um, while she's working for them um, and so there's a lot of office together scenes in here. This book really reminds me of Beautiful Bastard in that sense. You get a lot of office scenes, you get a boardroom scene, like it is hot, you guys. But what's unique about this book compared to all the other ones, the person in this book that has an illness or a disability is actually not one of the main characters. Our heroine's best friend in here named Tiana, 
she has POTS, which is my chronic illness, and oh my word, I adored, adored the discussion of POTS in this book. It was phenomenal. One of the main charities that our heroine is like tasked to link with big businesses is the Dysautonomia Foundation. And POTS is a form of dysautonomia. Um, if you wanna know about POTS and my chronic illness, by the way, just go check out my diagnosis video that's down below. This is the second time I've seen my chronic illness appear in a book before, specifically a romance book. And I loved this. I loved this, I feel like even more than the other book that I read that had chronic illness representation in it because POTS was discussed more in this one. Even though the side character had POTS in here, I, I loved the representation. It was amazing. You even have a fainting spell on page and like it was done so well and I just started laughing because like I, I'm like I've been through that. She faints at like an opera and in a theater and I'm like girl I've been there. <laughs> I just, I adored this. And so if you wanna learn more about my chronic illness, but also read about a couple having a good time in a boardroom, check this one out. I then have Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. This is kind of like a celebrity-ish romance. This is about April and Marcus, and April and Marcus both love writing fanfiction. They have been online fanfiction friends, writers for years, and they kind of uh, review each other's fanfiction stories and everything, and they kind of only write fanfiction about this one show that's based off of kind of like Game of Thrones. Little does April know though that like her friend that she's been chatting with online is actually one of the main characters of this TV show and he's like hiding his identity online. He doesn't really like how his role, his um, character has gone throughout this show and so he goes to fanfiction to kind of like vent and kind of act out the story he's always wanted. Well April wanted to post a picture of herself in cosplay that she did for this show on Twitter and she's a plus size woman and so she posted this cosplay she did of herself um, of this character on this show and she gets a lot of hate for it because of her body size unfortunately which sucks. You get the horrible trolls online and so Marcus notices this and decides to ask April out on Twitter like he asks her out not knowing that that's his online friend she doesn't know that that's her online friend they end up going on a date um I normally don't like celebrity romances but I feel like this is one of the exceptions I feel like a lot of people love this book it's not really being talked about all that much now but I feel like a lot of people loved it last year Marcus in here actually has dyslexia and I feel like this is my first book that I've read where the where dyslexia is talked about a lot and I love the discussion about dyslexia in this book and Marcus talks a lot about his struggles with dyslexia and his family's view of him because of his dyslexia and it was heartbreaking and I honestly just love the representation in here. Then I have a historical for you. We have My Darling Duke by Stacey Reed. Um, this is all about uh, Catherine Danvers and um, she's kind of like a spinster um, and she really wants her sisters or I think it's sisters, it's multiple siblings. <laughs> to find an advantageous marriage uh, to get married but it's kind of like known that the eldest sister has to get married before the younger sisters do and so she notices that there's kind of like a recluse in London society named um what's his name Duke of Thornton Duke of Thornton the Duke of Thornton is kind of a recluse and nobody's ever like really seen him in a very long time and so she's like I'm gonna spread a rumor around that I'm engaged to him and he's never gonna come in society. He won't know that I'm making up this rumor about him. And so she pretends to be engaged to this man she's never met in hopes of her sisters finally finding husbands. It's kind of like going swell, going well. And then uh, during one of her parties, the Duke shows up because he's been hearing about this woman who claims to be his fiance. And he's like, I wanna meet this woman. I wanna know what's going on. And so he comes in and the Duke is actually, um, I believe he was in an accident if I remember correctly. Um, uh, and he is scarred, heavily scarred, and he is wheelchair bound. Um, and I don't remember the exact condition that he has. I have a horrible memory, but he is wheelchair bound. He uses a wheelchair to get around. And oh, you do see him actually use his crutches at some point because his doctors recommend that. He doesn't really like doing that. So the hero kind of confronts her and is like, what's going on? What? Why are you saying that you're my fiance? She's very apologetic and is like, I didn't mean to um, do anything. I just wanted my sisters to get married. And he's kind of like smitten with her and is like, okay, I'll continue with this ruse. I really enjoyed this one and I need to read more historicals that have disability rep in them. Specifically, I feel like more books that have characters who are wheelchair bound because I feel like I've only read quite a few and I feel like there are so many people out there in the world who are wheelchair bound. So 
I need to see more of that representation. We then have Enticed by the Corsair by Ruby Dixon. This is book number three, a part of the Corsair series. This is an alien romance book. This series is all about space pirates. This one has a bunch of trigger warnings. So um, you read about in the previous two books how there are these four alien men, they're blue aliens, um, and they run this like pirate ship and a space pirate ship, by the way, not one on the sea. They're in space. The, pre the previous two books were about um, each one of the two of the crewmates finding a human um, mate to be with. And so these people are kind of like commandeering a, sl a slave ship, I feel like. Whenever they like obtain the ship and conquer it, they go on board and they notice this room where these horrible aliens have been torturing people, butchering them, torturing them. This room is essentially full of body parts. It is grotesque. It, this is one of Ruby Dixon's that I feel like more gruesome books for sure. And then they find this woman in a cage, the only survivor there. She is beaten and they, and the aliens on that ship ripped out her eyeballs. Um, she doesn't have eyes anymore. She is blind now. Um, and it is honestly grotesque. Like I felt horrible for her. Oh my gosh. But I feel like she is so strong. Like she's so strong. And the hero in here who like finds her and comforts her and gets to know her is honestly so sweet. So sweet, so caring. So you get to read about this heroine really overcoming the trauma that she's experienced and learning to live in a world or live on this ship now because they bring her onto their spaceship to be with them. Being blind because she was not blind before. This is a new experience for her. The only time she's been blind is by sitting in a cage. It's pretty dark at some point, so just beware, but I feel like this is one of Ruby Dixon's best, I feel like, a part of this series at least. I then have another Talia Hibbert book for you. We have A Girl Like Her. This is the first book, a part of the Ravenswood series. Now, this book is about, I believe her name is Ruth, and this is a romance with her neighbor who is Evan. So Ruth, um, she's kind of like the town recluse. Um, some trauma or something traumatic happened in the past. I'm not going to talk about it. It's spoilery, but something happened in her town to where like people are kind of like against her. So she kind of like is a recluse. She stays in her home and she just loves to stay in PJs all day, work from home on her computer and read comic books and collect comic books. And I love Ruth so much. She has autism, by the way. So that is the disability representation in here. She is very much a grump too, um, because she gets a new neighbor next door named Evan. And he comes knocking on her door and is like, hey neighbor, what's up? And she's like, go away. <laughs> um, but Ethan loves to cook. And so um, he really wants to get to know Ruth. And so he's like, I'll cook you a bunch of meals um, if you chat with me about comic books. And she's like, okay. Um, and so they develop a friendship through meals and comic books. And it is just so sweet. It's definitely a grumpy sunshine dynamic right here. I loved this one. I feel like it is a great start to the Ravenswood series. Next I have Bound to Submit by Laura Kay. This is the first book a part of the Blasphemy series. I've not read the rest of the series but I think that this is all about um, a club like a you know what kind of club a club named Blasphemy um, and the hero I think co-owns it with a couple guys and I think the other guys who own the club have their own books in the rest of the series, if I'm not mistaken. So this is about one of the owners named, what's his name? Griffin, Griffin, his name's Griffin. So Griffin and Kenna used to be together. Kenna actually went off into the Marines. Kenna actually gets in an accident when she is in the Marines and she loses part of her arm. So she's an amputee. Um, and so she feels like after she gets out of being in the Marines, she comes back home. She feels like she's like losing herself. And so she thinks back to a time where she fully embraced who she was. And she's thinking about the times that she had with Griffin and how he would use her in ways and um, how it helped her become who she is and really like grounded her. And um, so this book talks a lot about BDSM. It's a BDSM club. Um, and so she goes to Griffin, goes back to the club and asks him to be with her, um, to help her. And Griffin is ecstatic and really excited to see Kenna again. And so they start up a relationship all over again in this club and it may or may not lead to something more. I feel like this is a book that not a lot of people have read. Um, this one I gave a 3.5 stars to, so it's not necessarily my favorite, but I do love to see amputee rep in books so I definitely wanted to put this one in my recommendation list and um I really like Laura Kay's writing style I more so loved her 
book that's called Hearts in Darkness. That's one where two characters meet on an elevator and then they fall in love on an elevator because the elevator gets stuck. Um, I really liked that one, but I feel like this is a book that not a lot of people know about. I definitely want to try to get to the rest of the series. Then we have Romancing the Duke by Tessa Dare. This is the first book a part of the Castles Ever After series. So each book a part of the series is about um, the heroine of the story. They're kind of like inheriting a castle. They've had an, a castle inherited or bestowed upon them. And so Izzy Goodnight, she um, goes to this castle that she has inherited and she like goes to live there and there's a duke, there's a duke there and he's like uh this is my castle i don't know who you are um but i live here this is my house she's like no here's the paperwork this was bestowed upon me and he's like what's going on no this is my house and so they kind of like team up together to try to figure out what's going on who actually owns the house and um as he stays there at the house with him to like figure out what's going on but the hero in this historical romance book he is actually blind um so there's that representation in here for you um and uh he talks a lot about his blindness or he doesn't really talk about it he's very um i don't want to say ashamed but he's very reluctant to talk about his blindness. I feel like he feels embarrassed by it. Um, but Izzy kind of like brings him out of his shell and like tells him like he's no less of a man just because he can't see. And I really, really, really loved that. We have another Ruby Dixon book for you. We have Barbarian's Touch. This is book number eight, a part of the Ice Planet Barbarian series. This is an alien romance series where human women have crash landed onto an ice planet and they, uh, meet this very small tribe of aliens on here who are blue have horns a tail and they also have a symbiote in their body that will like hum and tell them when their mate is near them and so each book is about human women becoming mates with one of these aliens and so our heroine in here her name is lila and she is deaf and um the aliens in here they have never met anybody who's deaf before or hard of hearing and so she kind of like is a little bit feels a little left out because the only person who understands her is her sister and her sister is very protective so a heroine in this book she ends up getting kidnapped by one of the aliens in the tribe because in a bunch of books some of the aliens kidnap the human women to like take them away from the tribe in hopes of sparking resonance like the mating bond basically and this hero is like very frustrated because this woman won't speak to him but it's because she's deaf she can't hear you dude she can't talk to you she doesn't know what you're saying he's never met somebody who's deaf before so he doesn't know what's going on he's very frustrated and so the hero of this book is actually the guy who comes to rescue her um and so then they have their own little romance relationship there so I love this one. This is one of my favorites in this series. I love it so much. And um, I really like the hero, how like he um, really wants to learn sign and really takes the time to understand her. Lastly, we have one of my favorite romances of the year, which is Dearest Rogue by Elizabeth Hoyt. This is book number eight, a part of the Maiden Lane series. I've only read two books a part of this series. I have not read them in order. I know I probably should have, but I was just so excited to read this one. This is about Lady Phoebe who is blind and her romance with her bodyguard named James Trevelyan. Lady Phoebe is very, very frustrated with her brother because her brother's the one who hired uh james to be her bodyguard she doesn't want a bodyguard she doesn't feel like she needs one she doesn't want to be coddled or anything and so she's kind of like indifferent to james but then she slowly starts to get to know the man who's been guarding her and she starts to realize that she has feelings for him and james has just like been smitten over phoebe even though he's very stoic very stone-faced he won't reveal his feelings but he knows deep down like he is smitten with her will do anything for her he loves this woman um, but he is actually older than her and he doesn't feel like he deserves her in any way that she's too beautiful that she deserves better and she's just like no I want you I love you and oh my gosh I love this so much I love this couple I need to go back and reread the rest of the series and I just feel like whenever I read the rest of the series up to this one I might appreciate this one even more than I already do so there you have it those are 10 more romance books that have disability representation in them for you be sure to check out parts one and two linked down below for you also let me know if you would like to see a part four for this because I would totally be down for it but happy disability pride month everybody I love you all so so much thank you all so so much for watching this video I will see y'all see you in my next one bye y'all